Good evening, everyone. Um, I would like to introduce our speaker, Mary Beth Barrett Newman. She is an experienced executive coach and mentor with 20 years, 20 plus years of her first career spent in financial services and consulting. She has recruited, trained, and managed countless professionals, but it's her love for coaching and mentoring that led her to the creation of Second Career Consulting in 2010. Mary Beth's goal is to help each client present their best self in all aspects of a job search. In order to do that, she focuses on the unique needs of each client, partnering them with uh, partnering with them to develop their own unique job search strategies and tools for the job search. Our second uh, presenter is Nancy Froman, a nonprofit executive and consultant with local, national, and global experience, managing, growing, and advising nonprofits in strategy and fundraising. Um, as well as corporate responsibility. Nancy has firsthand experience in redefining her career from first a banker to now the nonprofit sector and entering new job markets through her moves around the US and across the globe. Nancy's banking career took her from New York to Indonesia to Singapore, where she uh, shifted from banking to the nonprofit sector, managing a foundation for the public hospital sector and Nancy's moved to the Chicagoland area from Asia in 2014 and manages um, managed to fundraise for several nonprofits, nonprofit organizations, including the American Brain Tumor Association, the Foundation Peripheral Neuropathy, and the Career Resource Center, which many of you might be familiar with. She currently is advising nonprofits on fundraising as she, again, redefines her career. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to our speakers. And just so you know, uh, speakers, I'm right behind the, the black box or perhaps the blue box. So if you have any questions, audience, please feel free to use the chat or the Q&A feature and I will pose them to our speakers as I see fit. Otherwise, we will answer them and make time at the end. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ashley. And um, thank you, Mary Beth, for um, Joining me tonight as 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 my expert, I'm I'm expert in that I am the career changer and reinvented myself and giving my personal story and brought Mary Beth in as her with her expertise in in coaching and helping people like me and like people who are on the call today on the video today, but also because of her. Um, personal experience in changing careers and doing what she's doing. So if I can, I did it before and now it's not doing it. Remember, I tried. Um, here we go. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to start off telling you a little bit about our stories. Um, I'll start and then kick it over to you, Mary Beth, and, okay. and let you tell your background. Um, good. Ashley pointed out that really the beginning of my story in my banking career took me from New York to Indonesia to Singapore. Um, I had a long career as a banker and somewhere at, in between Indonesia and Singapore, I had my first daughter and decided that what kind of... Um, decided that with a life change, I wanted a career change and to put more mission into uh, mission focus into what I was doing. And, um, and I did. So I shifted from being the banker to being a consultant in corporate social responsibility to then managing a foundation for the public hospital sector for almost a decade. And um, somewhere along the way, we decided to move to the United States and why I thought a move to the suburbs of Chicago, knowing nobody would be easy. I have no idea, but that's what I did. And again, put my networking skills, um, some of the things I'll talk about today, which were my my personal, uh, how I how I managed the change personally and um entered into the nonprofit sector, which I've done and enjoyed all the work that I did. My most previous role was as executive director for the Career Resource Center, which is where Mary Beth and I cross paths. Um, 
and learned a little bit about this career change process, um, which I'm putting to use again as I would redefine myself into being into consulting. Um, what I would say along the way, which we'll talk about, is I network, network, networked, and spoke to people and learned, and um, and it's a process. So hopefully we will talk about some of that process and answer some of your questions tonight. Um, Mary Beth, you've got a, a, right, a story got of change and, and redefinition as well. I do, I do. So uh, my story is after undergrad, I wanted to work at a big bank and I did. So um, I worked at a bank at downtown Chicago for five years. I got my MBA at night while working at the bank. And after that five year stint, um, decided I wanted to go into consulting. I found an opportunity at a boutique consulting firm that was in Northbrook at the time and um, decided that I would do that for two years and then I was going to go to a big consulting firm. Well, life has an interesting way of playing tricks on you. And short of 25 years later, I was still at that consulting firm and we had grown from teeny tiny, meaning I was number 11 to 300. We had we had we were based in LA at that time, and we had um, merged three different times. And then in the fall of two thousand and eight, um, we sold the company. I was a partner in the company, a shareholder in the company. We sold it to Prudential Retirement. I was fifty one, and I had no idea what I wanted to do next. And so I was lucky enough to be able to have a good severance uh, package, and I had outplacement as part of that. And I had a wonderful coach I worked with and I told him right off the bat, I'm not your typical person. I'm not putting together a resume. I'm not looking for jobs. I need to figure out what I'm doing next. And so we, he was great and we went down a path and, um, you know, which I did a lot of it, but he was kind of, you know, helping me with ideas and things like that. And it was literally through talking to people who, um, had left corporate America to do something else. That was one of my focuses. Like, how did they do it? If they could tell me how they did it, I would maybe be able to use their process. And I had a lunch with a woman who uh, I had uh, uh, been, who had been a client of mine. She was in HR at Brunswick, and that was a client I'd worked on for quite a while. And she lived in Evanston. I live in Evanston. And uh, we had lunch one day, and she had left um, Brunswick to start a, um, a foundation. And uh, when I asked her, like, you know, how did you figure this out? She said to me, I always knew what I wanted to do. And I got to tell you, I just went like, like that, that's like not what I wanted. I wanted to process. But that course of that conversation, she probably threw out like, you know, six different ideas to me, none of which were interesting except one. And she said to me, I think you would be very good working with women who've taken a career break, getting back into the workforce. And I went, that sounds interesting. How would I do that? And that literally was like the first thing up because I didn't want to do what I was doing before. That was interesting to me. And I just went from there. I did a lot of research. I did a lot of networking. And I'll tell parts of my story as we go through these slides. But um, I'm, and the irony is she doesn't remember saying that to me. And we we laugh we laugh about it because we're still in touch with each other. And um, it I think, what if I hadn't had lunch with her? Like, what would I be doing right now? So that's the, that is the interesting part of, of networking. You never know, you know, what you're going to hear, what you're going to find out and who's going to help you along the way. So Nancy, let's move on. Okay. So Mary Beth, this is, okay. this you're is starting us off. Okay. So getting started. So one of the things that I think is really important, something I did as part of my process, but also something that I um, make sure my clients do is to take a step back. And too often in our lives, and especially in our work lives, we're like on the treadmill. You know, we're constantly moving forward and we never take that pause. And I, when you're in a situation where you're thinking about making a change, or maybe you're forced to make a change, which, you know, literally I kind of was, um, that you, t you take that step back and you use that opportunity. And of course, it doesn't feel like an opportunity, but it truly is an opportunity to, to do a little self-reflection and to really think about what is it you want to do? Why do you want to do it? What are your strengths? So thinking about strengths, skills, interests, I'm a big list maker. And I think it's so valuable to get things like out of your head onto a piece of paper. 
So make a list. What do you think are your strengths? What are the skills that you would be bringing to a future position? What are the things that interest you? And there's a lot of skills and interest-based uh, tests out there. Uh, Myers-Briggs and Strong are two I sometimes do with clients. I did those plus a few others. Um, there, there's literally so many things out there. There's kind of goofy ones too, like, you know, pick a color and based on purple, like you should be a whatever. I, I wouldn't like, I mean, I guess those are like reading your horoscope, but other than that, I wouldn't really recommend them. Um, uh, Strength Finders is one I totally recommend. I don't know if you're familiar with this little book here, my little show and tell. Um, but I do this with almost every single client. And the reason I do, first of all, it's super cost effective. 20 bucks, get the you get the book on Amazon or go online and do their do it on their portal. Um, but even and no client I've ever worked with has done this and has said that they don't agree with whatever the strengths are that 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 the assessment says. Um, but what it does is it gives you language. And I think sometimes it's very difficult for us to talk about our strengths because strengths are typically something that you um, are natural to you and therefore they're easy and things that are easy, we don't value, but other people do. And so um, it, being able to like add to your language and be able to speak to um, you know, some of the things that you are good at and why you would, you know, bring it to a, a future employer, I think is good. Um, what color is your parachute is, has been around forever. Um, it's interesting. I just Googled when I was like waiting for us to get on the, on the call, I just Googled, um, books on career change. And, um, one of them came, it was like, then I found this wall street journal article. Uh, Google is totally your friend in this situation. And there's like five books I recommend. What color is your parachute is one of them. I mean, that's been around forever, but it's tried and true. And if it appeals to you, you know, go for it. One of the other things I think is really helpful is getting input from other people. So people that have worked with you. So colleagues, um, maybe, uh, um, you know, people who, who either work for you, people who are your peers, maybe your, your former bosses, you know, what do they see as your strengths and your skills, you know, and, um, and, and then asking, this is such a powerful question to ask is like, what else can they see you doing and why? We tend to be like this. We got blinders on and we're going through, you know, we got all our baggage we're carrying with us. And other people don't have that. They don't have blinders. They don't carry our baggage around with them. And asking like, you know, why do you think I would be good at that? I mean, sometimes that's like a real nugget of information that, you know, again, they're valuing your strengths. Those are things that come naturally to you. That's why people want to work with you. That's why somebody's going to hire you you know, gather some of this data. It's, it's really powerful. Another thing I have clients do is to do a, a, like kind of a couple of columns of likes and dislikes of current positions and prior positions. What did you like in that job? What didn't you like? And when you get something, you know, when you start putting things on a piece of paper, like you see trends, right? You can see the threads that run through, you know, different things. Oh, I like this, this, and this, and these jobs. Oh, I didn't like this and this, and these jobs. And it can be helpful in thinking about what, what, you know, what kind of a thing is going to be a fit for me um, and making sure that the dislikes are not something that is like 80% of some future career that you're thinking about. And then I'm very much a realist um, and I will tell this to clients when I work with them, but you know, what are the barriers to entry? <coughs> Excuse me, you know, compensation. Um, certainly can be one. There was a client that I worked with a bunch of years ago and she was thinking about going back to school for social work, um, but she was very focused on how much money she was going to make. And I was like, well, like, have you looked at what social workers make? Because it's really not what their value is. It's a lot less than that. And, you know, I mean, she was just being very unrealistic that she's not going to be making $250,000 with stock options if, you know, if she goes into social work. Um, Geographic location is not quite as important as it used to be, but you know one of the things about likes and dislikes is going to be, do you like working remotely? Do you not like working remotely? Um, would you like to be hybrid? And companies that were totally remote now are bringing people back. And 
you know, so being realistic about, you know, are there organizations and companies in the area in which you're interested? I have a brother who is a manufacturing uh, engineer at Northrop Grumman. So he is in the aerospace industry. If he decided he wanted, he's in LA. So if he decided he wanted to move back to Chicago, you know what? There's probably not a lot of jobs for him if he wants to stay in that industry. So be realistic about that. And then education and experience gaps are important as well. You know, maybe I love animals and I'd love to be a vet. But do I really want to go back to vet, you know, to school? And do I really want to, I don't know what vet school is, but I'm sure it's a whole bunch of years and a whole bunch of money. Um, and, you know, it, sometimes people will say, yeah, I, I'm fine with that. I would I'd be happy to do that. Great. You know, so be just be realistic about what are the barriers, you know, to entry and making sure that you are okay with that. And through talking to people, that's how you're going to get some of this data. So. And so that kind of rolls right into Nancy's, which is about research, right? How do, you, exactly. how do you research, you know, some of these ideas? So go ahead, exactly. Nancy. So once you've made your lists and you have some, um, some of those light bulb moments of, gee, this is where I want to go, what's your next step? Um, what is your self-assessment tell you? What are some of the positions that fit your interests? Um, as Mary Beth was saying, is it a growth industry? Is it in your area? Is it a growth position? Um, what kind of companies and organizations can you target? And very importantly, when you're doing a, um, a career switch is what vocabulary do I need to learn when I'm was moving from the for-profit world to the non-profit world, it's a whole different set of vocabulary and you have to make sure that you, in order to be taken seriously, that you know what words to use. Um, the best way to research is there's a lot to do, to look through. As, as Mary Beth said, Google is your friend. There's a lot online, but there's nothing that can take the place of actually talking to people and finding people in the roles that interest you and in the companies that you're targeting. Um, LinkedIn is great. I'm doing this now. I'm finding that I'm approaching people that are in areas that I'm interested in that have made the switches that I've made. And people love to talk about themselves and they love to help. So um, it's a great way to reach out and talk to people. It's great to find um, organizations. There's a lot of the professional organizations, chambers of commerce, um, uh, different um, industry focus groups are having events again. And a lot of them um, you can attend even as a non-member. So to attend and just learn and pick up what you can about the industry. Um, if you're looking to do volunteer, if you're looking for the from a for-profit to a non-profit role, there's a lot of volunteer opportunities. You can intern, you can shadow people. Um, it's really pulling together as much information as you can. And the what you're trying to look for is whether you would like the role, how did people get into that role themselves? Um, what are the gaps that you have or the barriers that you might have to getting those kind of um, those kind of positions? And I mentioned compensation. Can you afford to make the change? But I think more broadly, lifestyle. Is it is it um, is it the hours you want to work? Is it the money you want to make? Is it uh, where you want to be. Um, Mary Beth mentioned that there are more and more roles that are virtual, but I think companies are starting to bring people back into their into the office as well. So, and some roles you just can't do virtually. So really um, to try to find out what is the day to day and that the best way to do that is by talking to people. Um, filling the gaps, uh, there's a few ways to do that besides, as I said, volunteering, interning, shadowing. Um, is formal education, do you have to go back to school? Um, are there boot camps? There's 
uh, Illinois WIOA grants, where if you are unemployed, you can uh, take classes for free once you get the grants and fill in um, a lot of your skill set. There is a ton of online courses now, LinkedIn, Udemy, some others will have online course courses that are either free or reasonably priced. Um, volunteering, as I said, and you can uh, try out different skill sets and and um, and see and um, it's skill called skill based volunteering. So if there's organizations that you know and that you like, you can offer your skills and as a skills based volunteer, and then trying contract work or side gig projects and tech test it out and. It helps you gain experiences and you get references. And I will tell you my personal experience is I'm becoming a consultant in spite of myself because I started taking on projects and more people are hearing what I do. I'm getting more projects and I'm not sure where it's going to take me, but I'm learning a lot in the process. Um, Mary Beth, what else would you add in terms of where people can research and what they should be looking for? So I, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about like the volunteering and shadowing and 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 thing because as um, having you know been a coach for a, a bunch of years, um, I I recommend this to people who are thinking about trying something like totally new. And it's been it like I'm just sort of reflecting as you were talking, Nancy, and I'm thinking about there was a young man um, that I worked with a number of years ago, and he um, had decided that he wanted to become a social worker. And my gut was that he wanted to become a social worker because he had had personal experience with a social worker and he liked the social worker. Um, and so he was all ready to, you know, to get into a master's program. And, you know, I'm like, you know what, why don't you take a class? So he took like an intro to social work at um, college, I think at College of Lake County, and he hated it. He absolutely hated it. And I thought, oh my gosh, thank goodness you did that because it like saved him so much time and money, right? Um, of, of doing something like that. And then there was another client of mine who um, had taken a really long career break. She had been um, out of the workforce for 22 years and um, every place she had worked prior to that didn't exist anymore. Um, and anybody who wasn't my contemporary would never have heard of the places anyway. So it was not a good, it was not a good scenario, but she was a big volunteer. And one of the things that she did was she, um, she decided to be more strategic in her volunteering and she worked at an organization and they used Razor's Edge, which is a pretty common um, nonprofit piece of software. And she ended up applying for a position and um, she found out later that one of the things, well, two, two reasons she ended up getting the position. One was she, it was posted on LinkedIn and she reached out to the person on LinkedIn, whoever posted it. She reached out to that person to talk about the job and she talked to the person, not like a chat in LinkedIn. She talked to the person about the job. And then secondly, although it was not in the job description, that organization used Razor's Edge and the fact that she had familiarity with it was, you know, ended up being really, really helpful in having her be not only a candidate, but ended up getting the, getting the job. Um, and so there's just, and then there was another individual I worked with who was totally thinking about changing careers. She was very successful in the sales kind of thing that she was doing, but it was just like, you know, I'm doing it for the money. It's not that much fun. I really am not getting much out of it. And she had like three different paths she was thinking about going down and so she like we had the spreadsheet that she put together and she like talked to people in each one of them to figure out, you know, what is that job really like? What do those people do all day? And, you know, what would I need to do to be able to do that? And um, the the um, the role she ended up picking was speech pathology. Um, which meant she had to go back to school. She had to take some basic classes because she had no sciences in her undergrad. Uh, I think she was a business major of some kind. And she had to take some like basic science classes. And then she had to apply to a, a master's program. 
And, um, but she was able to shadow somebody and she's, which was really, you know, great to be able to do that. Cause like, make sure you really understand what those people do, because what you think they do in your vision might be really like a do does not equal sign, you know? And so that's what she's doing. So, you know, if you do the right investigation and the right homework, you'll end up in the right place. Oh, that's all that's all really good and my personal experience is I met people in the nonprofit sector I met people um doing what I was doing by starting off as a volunteer and mm -hmm. we'll talk later on about resources where you can find some of these uh volunteer mm -hmm. um shadowing and interning opportunities but I think all of that is really important is to step put your do the research, put your toe in before mm -hmm. you make any long-term decisions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, especially with nonprofit, um, I've worked with so many people who will talk, start talking to me about that they're in the corporate, you know, and they, they, they want to move to nonprofit. And I, and I always challenge them, you know, on that. Um, and, and, you know, I always say like, just remember, you still have to work with human beings and there's probably less money. Okay. So that's like my definition, you know, my definition of, of nonprofit. And I think that sometimes people think it's like this panacea of wonderfulness. It's like, no, it's still a it's still an organization that has, you know, business to achieve. And, you know, um, yeah. but it, you know, see, so and the other thing is that in order to be able to get into nonprofit, and you know this better than I do, Nancy, you need to show that you've done that kind of, of work. Like you can't have no volunteering or anything, you know, in your history on your resume and then say, oh, I'm going to flip from being a, you know, whatever to, you know, being in, in nonprofit. Like, no, you have to show like that's part of your DNA. And even if it's maybe not in exactly the same industry or something, but that has been part of, you know, who you are and you will be bringing that and, you know, plus your corporate experience to a nonprofit yeah. organization. Well, well, as we're talking later, we'll say, you know, you have to, you have to have a good reason to be making a switch, whatever that switch is. Um, so I think that leads us to the to the next. You've done your research. You've got some ideas. Mary Beth, can you share some strategies sure. uh, on people who are making the move? Yeah. So um, if you are, you know, I think this is really unique to each individual uh, because what a strategy for one person um, might not be the strategy for another person. And if you're still working, be careful, um, you know, it, be very careful who you share things with. Uh, I'm a big believer in, you know, once you tell somebody that your secret, it's no longer a secret because you don't no longer control it. So there's this whole balancing act, right, between reaching out to people, learning things and all of that, while at the same time, making sure that you're not jeopardizing, you know, your, your, your day job. And um, I think, you know, different companies um, will focus on that differently. Uh, some companies would be fine if you had some gig thing that was not related in any way to, you know, what you're, what you're doing uh, for that organization. Others um, have things that you maybe signed at the beginning that talk about you're not going to have any outside work or whatever unless you disclose it and, you know, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, just uh, be be smart about about what you do and, and how you do it, you know, and who and who you do it for. And it, it, certainly if you if there is a, a possibility for you to move to, you know, um, to be able to make a pivot, like do something different um, than what you're currently doing. Let's say you're in finance right now in your organization and you really want to get into to human resources. Um, you know, is there a way for you to somehow pivot within your organization and make them make that transition, you know, in an organization that already knows you and values you and sees the kind of, of work you do? 
I mean, that is always something that will be um, the easiest way then to move on to something else in another organization because you've already had that experience and possibly your current organization might be more open to you pivoting than uh, you know some other organization that doesn't that doesn't know you. Um, you know, and these are things to be thinking about. You know, are you looking to stay in the same industry you're in and take whatever industry knowledge you have with you? Um, or do you want to be in a totally different, you know, industry, but maybe a similar, you know, kind of, of role? Um, and, you know, I've worked with people in all these categories where um, this one individual um, worked in like... Um, I don't know what, I don't know what to get they actually call it, it was like train freight or something it was about train cars and freight and and um and he wanted to do like logistics was what he did basically but he wanted to do it in a in a different industry and one of his challenges was um language and Nancy you talked about that earlier because I was reading some of the things on his resume and I was telling him like let me tell you what those words mean to me and then you tell me what they mean to you and then let's come up with some words that no matter who reads this, they're going to interpret them correctly. Um, and so especially when we've been in an industry for a while, we're just so used to using certain words to describe something. But somebody in a different industry is going to totally use that word, you know, in a, in a different in a different way. So really thinking about, you know, those those kinds of things as far as like, do you want to stay in the same industry? Do you want to be in a different industry, but maybe a similar role? Or do you want to do something, you know, completely different? And then the most important thing for you to do is to make a plan. You know, don't be like things aren't going to just happen by, you know, by magic. Um, you know, make a plan that and setting weekly goals is one of the things I really reinforce with clients um, because January turns into February, turns into March, and then it's August, you know, and you're not any further than you were. But if you put together a plan and you set weekly goals, even if on the busiest of weeks, you come up with one thing you're going to do, one person you're going to reach out to, you know, um, just, you know, and really net networking is so huge to, to any of these things because people who know you will, um, will give you sort of the benefit of the doubt and they won't be so hung up on what you don't have and they will be more focused on what you do have and what you are bringing, you know, to a new organization. And certainly there's, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I have my own company. It's me. But there's definitely people that I have worked with in the past that if I was at some other organization and I was talking to them, I wouldn't care. I would hire them in a heartbeat because I knew I know the kind of you know person they are. I, I know we have shared values. I know how they work. I know you know the the kind of work they do. I know how they interact with clients. I know how they interact with executives. Like you know, I I wouldn't care that they didn't know certain things. All that's you know you, that's teachable. That's learnable. You know, it's more about the character of the person and and that kind of thing. Um, but getting back to the actionable business plan, you know, is put together a plan and 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 re, you know and look at it periodically. You know, set you know set weekly goals. So when I decided that I wanted to become a career coach, one of the things I did is I put together a business plan. You know, I was like, Mary Beth, you're a business person. You need to act like you were in your old job and you came up with a plan, a, a something that you were going to do, and you would put together a business plan and you'd present it to your, you know, the, my, my boss, who was the CEO. Like we would sit down and we would talk about it and, you know, and then we would revise it periodically. And based on that, then I would have my weekly goals and I would stay accountable to myself. And so that was, you know, what I did was I put together a, a business plan. And I think if I hadn't, I don't, you know, I don't know that I would have been as focused and uh, um, successful as, as I was in, in starting my business. Yeah, great. Yeah, I think that um, the people I've known who've made, uh, including myself, who've made um, career changes, really the easiest way to do it is either look for a new job in your same company or your same industry. So if you're doing, if you want to do, if easier to be 
a project manager or HR person in finance if you've already been in working in a bank or to do the same role, but in a different industry. If we're talking about moving from for-profit to not-for-profit, if you've been HR or accounting, to look for an HR or accounting role in a nonprofit is an easier is an easier move. Um, but I, I, I hear you, Mary Beth, putting that business plan in place and having those goals is very important. Um, so, so here's some practical tips that I'll go through some that these are mine and I'm going to ask um, Mary Beth to add hers or her additions. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about this. We networking can't under it. Un, we can't talk about networking enough because as Mary Beth said, um, people who know you are the best people to try to recommend you to other roles. It's the best way to learn about what you want to do and to learn that vocabulary. I'm coming from um, the nonprofit sector. If we talk about projects and programs and development, that's going to be a very different discussion than somebody who's using project and programs and development in a financial institution or a bank or in a manufacturing setting. So to make sure that you know, you network to learn what you need to learn before you even start out. Um, if you're currently working, to can you make that change in your current company? Or as we said, in the current industry, or is there something completely different that you want to do? Um, the next step is really how to present yourself and what's your personal brand um, and why this move makes sense. Um, if you're moving from nonprofit, from for-profit to nonprofit, uh, you know, as as um, as Mary Beth said, why does this make sense to you? And you're going to have to explain to people why you're making this move. If what you were doing before was working for a big company and now you want to be an entrepreneur, why is that? So how do you define who you are and what you bring to the table, what your skills are in a in a very succinct way? And why what you're doing makes sense for what for your future career and your future roles. Um, then it's when you are talking to people, you're applying for jobs, writing cover letters, is applying those um, to the new role and making sure you're using the buzzwords that other people understand uh, so that uh, there's a feeling that you're in it for real, not just because, gee, I'm trying things out. Uh, this is something you really want to do. Um, the next thing really is, is how do you get noticed if you want to make a change? Um, how do you become that subject matter expert in coaching or HR or nonprofit management or whatever it may be? Um, and that's researching, study, but also writing. And LinkedIn and social media is a great way to start, start writing articles, start getting your name out and sharing, um, sharing ideas so that people start thinking of you in that space. Um, and then making and, you know, presentation. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, I was going to finish what you're saying. And then I was just going to. And, and then I was going to say, and then taking that knowledge and sharing it through presentations, through teaching, through um, through other venues where people start associating you with that subject and those type of materials. I'm going to pause and let Mary Beth okay. talk let, let about me, the let first me, ones. Let me interrupt. So, no, just one of the things I was thinking when you when you were talking about, you know, um, you know, LinkedIn and, and, and social media and stuff. These are great questions to ask in networking. Who do you follow? What podcasts do you listen to? Who are the subject matter experts in this industry? You know, what, what organizations do you belong to? I mean, like all those kinds of things. This, again, it's a big research project. You're just gathering data but this is how you're going to find you know the, the the right kinds of things by people in the field and it's not going to just you know one person's you know data isn't going to be it you keep asking people you know these kinds of of questions and you just keep learning more and more about you know what 
you know, what groups you should be going to, or like, oh, they've got, you know, they're presenting at the Vernon Hills Library, and so you should be on that webinar and, you know, whatever. So, I mean, but it's really like it being curious, I think, is really is really key to, to gathering the knowledge that you need. And then sharing that, because mm -hmm. it's amazing, you know, if you share um, what the people the 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 people in the know and the movers and the shakers in the industry are saying you know that some of that knowledge rubs on off on you and you become that subject subject matter expert so um it helps to you to learn but then share that so that people start associating you with that subject and and those materials um so once you've gotten all that research and then you're applying for the job how do you apply? And this is something Mary Beth and I have talked about is, um, you know, how do you get past the ATS systems? How, what will HR think? How do you work with recruiters? Is it worth it? The reality is that most recruiters the eight, are looking for the round peg for the round hole. So it's maybe difficult unless you know that recruiter and you've got your brand tight and you know why you're making that move. Um, getting past the ATS system is really focusing on skills and transferable skills, which we really didn't talk that much about, but that's mm -hmm. very important is what skills did you have and what how do they apply to the new role? And, um, and then having your story straight why are you doing this? Why are you making this move? Why does it make sense for you to make the move? And what are you bringing that somebody else might not have? And still your best chance of get making that move is through people you know. And I say no in quotes here because it may be people you've known forever or it may be people that you meet through the networking process that when you've got your story, you've got your brand, you've got your vocabulary, you know what skills transfer and why you're making the move. Having somebody take you by the hand and say this makes sense is gonna be the easiest way to make that move. Um, I, I mentioned just again, job fairs, networking industry events. We talked about following the thought leaders. There's nothing like um, in, in being someplace in person and I make a comment that if you're going to networking events, industry events, job fairs, even if it doesn't seem to totally align with what you want to do, meeting the people from the companies that you're interested in or meeting people in the industry that you're interested in um, helps you get to the people that you want to get to and the roles that you want to get to. So if you're interested in in um, moving into a, um, if if you're interested in moving into a, into a sector or an area, um, even if they're not talking about HR and you're interested in HR, you or you're interested in engineering, they're not talking about engineering, to meet the HR person, there may, they may be able to introduce you to other people. So just be thinking out of the box as to how do I get into the places and make the connections I want to connect with? Mm -hmm. Mary Beth, what else would you add? These are the yeah, things. So For me, it was talking to people, networking with people, volunteering, and learning, becoming a subject matter expert, and getting my vocabulary right. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's all That's all right. And I think that... Um, you know the the networking is it's like it's like this humongo umbrella right and it's um it it so often people will say well you know everybody you know i don't know anybody who's an ex or everybody i know is you know a lawyer or or something and it, and i always tell them it doesn't matter what those people do it's about who they know and so i may um you know, it, I'm, I'm a career coach. I was in, you know, consulting and then, you know, whatever, a hundred years ago I was, you know, in, in banking. And um, so it's not about that, but it's like, who do I know? Well, I know people that are in all different kinds, you know, of, of fields and you just, you know, it, it's about 
being open. And when somebody says to you, you know, Nancy, what's new with you? Or what have you been doing lately? Or what's going on with you? You strategically answer that question. You don't talk about what your kids are doing. You don't talk about, you know, like what you did over the holidays. You say, well, actually, I'm thinking about pivoting careers. And one of the things I'm thinking about doing is X or I'm exploring. That's a word I love. I'm doing some exploring. I like what I'm doing now, but I'm thinking maybe of, you know, pivoting to something, something else. So I'm doing some exploring. And then it's like that just triggers a conversation. Well, what are you exploring? Well, what are some of the things I'm thinking about are X or, you know, some of the things I'm looking for in a new position might be, you know, why do you know? And, it, you know, just trying to have those kinds of conversations. And it's like, I could, I, even though I was like the head of sales in my company, I was a terrible networker. Um, I truly was. And once I started my business, you know, if you build it, they will not come. You have to be out there talking about it and you have to be ready to talk about it at all times. And so I learned that I had a business card with me everywhere I went. I have, I have had clients from a neighbor's backyard barbecue, met her college roommate, who then referred one of my early clients to me. She's an executive coach and she referred a client to me. We're still in touch. She still refers clients and I do as well. Um, I was at um, a, a college, a, there's a lot of college stuff here, a college a friend's kid's wedding. And um, I was talking to the wife of somebody I knew, but I didn't know she, they had been kind of recently married and I didn't really know her very well. And, you know, sure enough, I worked not only with a friend of hers, but with her, you know, it, it, am I out there like trolling for business? No, not even close. Um, but it's, you know, well, what do you do? And then people, you know, say, oh, I'm thinking about whatever, or I just got laid off and I'll be like, you know what, call me. Like, you know what, let's, let's just call me, let's talk, you know, and then you, you kind of like plant the seed for, you know, the off, the offline thing. But, um, in, I mean, the stories I could tell about networking and about, you know, people finding opportunities are like, you can't plan them, but you'd be strategic in how you talk, you know, a, about them. There was a, a neighbor, um, whose kids were the same age as my kids. This was a bunch of years ago. And she was walking her dog one day and I was walking out of my front door and we started chatting. And I said, what's, what's new with you? And she's like, oh, she, she, her husband had, um, had just lost his job. And I'm like, oh, you know what? Have him send me his resume and, you know, and, you know, whatever. And so not only did she mention that, he actually sent me the resume. I then shared it with my husband. He said, you know what? My former company is looking for people just like him sent it to the the head of recruiting that used to work for him. That guy ended up getting a job at that company. All because when walking her dog, you know, she mentioned to me that her husband, you know, was looking for, for work. So did she plan that when she left the house with her, you know, with her poop bag? I don't think so. But you know, what? <laughs> it's, uh, it, yeah. it's all it's just all about what do you say and who do you say it to? And, yeah. you know, and then following up and doing those things. Um, so uh, networking is definitely, definitely the key. Um, That's right. That's right. We probably should and move along so we can answer we should. questions. I was yeah. going to say, I was going to say, and, and, and again, knowing what your skills are and how they transfer and how they apply to where you want to be, not necessarily where you've been. Um, so we want to give some resources, Mary mm -hmm. Beth, I'll let you start yeah. and then I can throw some in. Sure, absolutely. So, um, you know, we'll do a plug for the library here because I went on the website and I was like, huh, there's some really good resources here, you know, and I live in Evanston. So I, you know, I'm not familiar with the Vernon Hills Public Library. Um, but, you know, I think so often there are resources that are right there for us and we don't tap into them. Um, a lot of universities have alumni career centers now. Um, and so, you know, think, think about, about that as well. Um, you know, look at assessment tools like the strength binders, the what color is your parachute. Glassdoor gives good information on companies, you know, data points on compensation. Um, you know, obviously they post jobs and things like that too. Salary.com gives information on 
um, on on compensation, which I think is it's a good it's important to to figure out. You know, if you're looking for two fifty and that kind of role pays you know seventy five thousand, well, you know what that's that's a gap that's never gonna you know that's never gonna be able to you're never gonna find the, the uh, something that's acceptable. Um, o Net Online is a government resource um, that it has a bunch of different you know tools and stuff, but it will give information on different kinds of roles and similar kinds of roles. And you can put in what area of the country you live and they will talk about what the job prospects are and compensation levels. And it's actually a pretty, a pretty useful tool. And, you know, different industry specific organizations and networking events. It is always amazing to me, like the the number of you know organizations and you know uh, things that exist that you've never heard of before. So ask ask people those questions. You know what what groups do you belong to? What you know are you part of any networking groups? Are you part of any you know networking events? Is there anything coming up you know that I should know about? And you know it's all about the people you know, but the people they know and the people they know. And so, Nancy, you made a comment about something related to that earlier, and it's sometimes it is like the six degrees of separation is how you end up someplace. Um, and so making sure that, you know, you're out there talking, you know, talking to people. So, um, and yeah. Google is your friend. You know, I always say type in, you know, not as good as, as, as a research librarian, I'll say that, but Google is your friend where literally, you know, like type in the question in your head. And it is amazing sometimes the things that will, you know, that will pop up. So Nancy, you go. Uh, no, and I think all of that is great. I, I want to just add that um, many of the local chambers of commerce, uh, all the towns have chambers of commerce. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be really hard to go into those events without being a member now very much. Uh, many of them have. Uh, you can you can attend with paying a little bit more, but you can still attend, and it's a great way to meet people. Um, a lot of there's a lot of information on LinkedIn now, on on, on the um, and as Mary Beth said on Google. I just want to mention a couple of organizations. Taproot, T A P R O O T, is an organization that will match professionals with um, skilled vol skilled volunteering opportunities in the nonprofit sector. And that is a great resource to um, if if you're in between jobs or you want to gain some experience in another sector, they're a great uh, group to tie up with. The other one which is for um, Lake County is called is called Hands on Suburban Chicago and they do the same. They'll um, t they'll find there's ways to volunteer, but there's also skills based volunteering. Um, I'm in Barrington. There's a, a volunteer connection on in Barrington. Uh, many of the towns have places where they will um, set you up with with volunteer assignments. And the trick is to say, I'm looking for skills based volunteering that uses your professional knowledge. Um, and there are people who would love to have you. And it's a win-win situation and it's good for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think- I think we'll throw it back to Ashley. We're gonna throw it back. If anybody's got questions, we're happy to hear. Mm -hmm. I haven't got any questions coming through quite yet, but I do agree with um, everything that you guys have said as far as uh, networking, I think, is obviously a very, very important piece. Um, there is someone that is using the Q&A to ask questions. It's not the chat, but you can use that Q&A feature, and I can definitely answer or, you know, pose your question. And um, somebody raised their hand as well. I don't see any raised hands. Okay. It was I the person do. that's doing this in the Q and A. Yeah. Okay. If they're looking to verbally do it, that's not a doable thing, correct? Yeah, we're not gonna uh un... type it in the chat. Yeah, just type it in the Q and A. Type your question, and I'll I'll read it. 
Um, I think that uh, coming in as far as, you know, my experience with networking and sometimes getting comfortable with just asking the question or even like you said, framing it as like, I'm not going to talk about my kids or what's actually maybe going on in my day to day, but I'm going to be um, intentional with the time that I have with the people that I have. Um, it's kind of just a great idea to practice, you know, get in front of yourself in the mirror, in the bathroom mirror and kind of go over it a couple of times. Like it's school. So um, somebody's asking, can you please repeat the first organization that you mentioned that matches volunteers with skills? Yeah, it's called, Tap root T A P R O O T. That's one, and then the other is Hands On Suburban Chicago. And I'm... if I can, let's see if I can get to the slide that has our contact information. There we and, go. And and Ashley, what was the 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 thing that you mentioned at the very beginning, which is the kind of the consortium of libraries. And, yeah, you know, that, the it, Lake Cook Career Collaborative. That's it, um, like, really like just all libraries. Or is it just? It's uh, careercollab.org. Career, C-O-L-A-B dot org. Career Collab, C-O, is it L-L-A-B? Let me look it up. Um, oh, maybe, okay. But I um I put our contacts up here. Yeah. Um, my Double. specialty is really the nonprofit sector. So if anybody's got any questions or wants to volunteer or has some ideas, reach out to me. I'm happy to try to figure out how to connect you. And um, and Mary Beth's contacts are here. She's got a wealth of information, and um, there there are a lot of resources for. Um, looking for careers. Uh, one of them that I found helpful was the I Relaunch, Mary Beth, which you had recommended to right. me. And that's specifically for um, people who are re-entering the job, um, the job market. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have some great resources. So I'm a coach for I Relaunch. I've been familiar with people for like, I don't know, most of my, most of my coaching career. And it's I and then R E L A U N C H um, dot com. And um, oh, we got some questions coming in here. I can see them. Yeah, I was going to read them. Uh, so okay. there are several questions just about ageism in the career change fields. Do you have any strategies for um, making those change in careers in your 50s and 60s? And, and then also, how do you explain the gap in your career and show? Um, and how to tackle ageism. Okay, I'll start, Nancy, and then you add, okay? Okay. Um, so um, is there ageism? Yeah, okay. And it, it, it you know, it, there's nothing you can do about it. So, um, or you can complain. I mean, I've been in such in sessions where people are just bitching and moaning about it. It's like, really? I mean, like, move on. So it, my thought, my, my focus is, are you relevant? Are you current? Do you embrace technology? Do you look and act, you know, young or old? Um, you know, do you, and I don't mean like young, like a teenage kid, right? But it's about, um, you know, are you uh, like, do you like learning new things? Is that how you come across to somebody? Or are you, you know, a person that doesn't want to be involved in any technology and things like that, then you know what, then you have aged yourself. Um, so it, to me, it's about, you know, are you learning new things? Are you, are you high energy? And does that come across? Are you, and then for, you know, do you, how do you physically dress and look? I mean, that shows something, you know, too. Um, so I, so I've been out of college for a very long time and I wasn't able, I was at actually an I relaunch conference and I wasn't able to go to this, but my a couple of my roommates went to um, our 40th college graduation, our re reunion. And they, they told me this funny story about how they walked in this one room and then they walked out because they're like, there was like all these old people in there. And then they realized it was our class. And I was like, oh my God, didn't you guys feel good that you didn't associate, you didn't like make yourself part of those old people. But it's like that kind of a mindset. 
You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, do you have to be like on top of, you know, AI? No, but you better know what it is and you better know how companies use it. And it's part of our life, whether you think it is or not. Um, and, you know, so like be curious and, and learn about things. Nancy? Yeah, I I think at both ends of the extreme, I mean, my kids right just coming out of college and and me at the other side, we, we complain about, yeah. you know, what people expect, but I, I can't worry about it because I can't change it. All right. I can do is know what I can offer and know what I can do and um and have trust that that the organizations who want my skills are going to see that and um i can tell you that through this job search i've met a lot of people including my family members and my husband who are you know in their 50s and approaching 60s and we've gotten jobs so um it takes longer and when I'm philosophical, I say, well, I don't want to work for a place that doesn't accept, doesn't acknowledge what I know and doesn't appreciate what I can bring. Do I have days where I wake up and I want to throw a vase across the room because I'm frustrated? Yeah. Um, but I, I think as, as Mary Beth said, we just have to be focused on what we can bring and being as knowledgeable and current as we can be Mm -hmm. with what's going on now. Yeah, and it goes back to networking, right? When you network your way in, when you know somebody, they don't care. They're not focused on like what year you graduated from college or how or how old you are. Like they just know what you're like to work with, you know? And they want to work with we like if we liked working with you each other at one point, I'm going to like working with you again. So again, it goes back to you know, networking is a is a great way to kind of get past that ageism thing. You know, the thing that I found, you know, when people when I first started hearing the discussions like we are having now, in my mind, I was just thinking it, this takes this is taking way too long, but you've got to be patient and finding the right thing, particularly when your career changing takes patience. And to the person who asked about the gap, that's why doing some of this research or volunteering or shadowing or courses is great to take because when some it gives you something to talk about about what you were doing in the gap mm -hmm. and you just own it it is what it is you know yeah. i took a career break to raise my kids i took a career break to take care of my elderly parents and i'm really excited about this opportunity and i feel that i you know you go right to that you go right to the thing you want to talk about yeah. I don't think it has that has as much of a stigma as it used to. I mean, back to yeah. LinkedIn, you can actually put in that you took a break and what kind of break it was. I think it's just, as you said, Mary Beth, owning it and knowing what you learned through the process. Mm -hmm. I think there was, was there another question? Um, Just kind of a comment about um the difficult. Oh, nature of about resumes about resources yeah res resumes. Uh, what are the resources for making resumes i was going to share we do have a three-part resume um interviewing resume and cover letter program coming up but i think it's in the spring so it's not um public yet like it's just such a, mm -hmm. a die hard thing to get into but it's part of the career collab series so um go ahead and check back with the career collab um, dot org and um, otherwise, you know, libraries have, thank you, by the way, for mentioning libraries as a resource for job seekers and upskillers, because it is a serious position of ours to help support people that are in these, these times. Um, but we have access to a thing called LinkedIn Learning, which is formerly lynda.com, mm -hmm. which is just wonderful uh, sort of video upskilling uh, sessions, um, videos and classes. So go, Andres, Excuse me, please. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, we also have like on um, MOOCs, uh, Gale courses, things like that, that will teach you in depth ways to write a resume. And and Ashley, it's also so, isn't it, that there, um, there are courses and classes and events at all the libraries in the area. And very often the best way to find out about them is through your own local library. Like, um, 
if you're there's a cross arrangement that if you wanted to attend a um a, an event in in Glenview or in, in Evanston or some of the others that, that you can do that if you have a library card and I found I found that very useful yeah, absolutely. You don't you don't even have to have a library card to go to events. If you want to register online, I don't think that we ask for a library card number and we don't limit it to card holders specifically. Um, the place where you might get into uh, like a little bit of a trick is those access to online resources, which will prompt you for your library card number. So if your library doesn't subscribe to those things, then you won't be able to gain access. But, but how hard is that, right, to get a library card? Not hard at all. And yeah. also, if you come into any library, you can always use anything any library has to offer if you're in their building. You don't have to be a resident or anything. I know I raise my children well because not only do they have their own library cards at places, but my son, will, because he does audiobooks, he uses mine, my parents in Mount Prospect, my daughter's, who was in Delaware, but she's now moved back to Chicago, but she still has her library card in Delaware, and whatever. So I raised them well that they're very into the public libraries. <laughs> Super users. That's Super smart. Users, exactly. But but it's there. Are, there are lots of events and and lots of resources for Absolutely. for resume writing. But you know, I think keeping an eye on the one the Vernon Area Library will have would be really helpful. I think for everybody. All right, with that, ladies, it is 10, uh, 20 till 8, and I really appreciate all of your time. Um, this is a great program, and it's just it's also wonderful because I love the nonprofit space, too. So thanks for sharing all those nonprofit um, links and resources. Um, and to anybody that, you know, take down their contact information, they're willing to chat with you. You can also reach me at ajohnson at vapld.info, and I I'm at the library, so come and find me. And I'm going to send this out to everybody that registered for the program tonight. And um, you can feel free to share it with anyone in your network who you think might benefit from it. So let's share the wealth, everyone. Yeah, and I'm just writing those two organizations into the chat now so that you can look them up online. And and um, and as I said, please reach out to me if that's something of interest to to, uh, to work on and get involved with. All right, we've got lots of thank yous in the chat. And so with that, I will say good night. Thank you to you both. And you did a great job. You're welcome. Thank good you. Evening, thank everyone. you much. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Take care.